Get ready for the quickest and fastest street tire motorcycles in the world. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to this always thrilling no willy bar category known as Pro Street Drag Racing. Welcome, everybody, to Maryland International Raceway and get set for complete round by round elimination coverage of this category from the XDA Super Bike Showdown. Here comes Jeremy Teasley's GSXR 1000 against Aaron Litton's. Turbo Hayabusa. Oh, the sweet sound of a burnout. A total of 19 top-notch competitors showed up to compete at this event. The Turbo Suzuki Hayabusa is the most common choice, but there's a lot of different combinations legal. We will see the 1000s. We'll even see a Honda 1000. That is very fast. There is Jason Dunnigan on his DME turbocharged Suzuki. With this category, you're talking about 700 horsepower, no wheelie bar, a street tire, stock frames, factory headlights, tail lights must be used, and the bodywork must be stock appearing. It was not long ago that the race to the six second zone was on. Now, with the technology and advancement, these motorcycles dip deep into the mid sixes with regularity. Now in final qualifying, it was that man, Aaron Litton, who stole the show. Coming into this race, the world record was held by Jeremy Teasley at a 6.49. In opening qualifying, Aaron Litton, who you now see in the far lane alongside his teammate Rodney Williford, made everyone's jaw drop with a 6.48. Now let's take you to the second session of qualifying as Litton looks to put on even more of a show with his turbocharged Williford Racing Suzuki Hayabusa. Bam, Litton and Williford nail a nice whole shot. 1,320 feet to the quarter mile mark. Look at the scoreboard. 652 the mile an hour. A new speed record for the pro street category. I had to take a picture. How pretty is that? 200 and 32 miles an hour and just like that the field was set for race day sunday the top 16 make the program and let's take you to race day all the sportsmen competitors were getting ready here we are straight out of columbus ohio ladies and gentlemen team teasley family racing guys i think between the four of you what are we in about 35 classes today <laughs> about every one every pro class about every class they are very cool now jeremy Big weekend here for Pro Street. You had the record at a 649. Yep. Aaron sneaks in there at a 648. You think you got anything for him today? Well, I think so. But uh, I think I can probably go 45, 46. 45? I, I think somebody might have jumped the gun on the rules a little bit. Gave a three speed auto, 25 pounds lighter. But it is what it is. So the big guys, they do get a big advantage, right? Yeah, after that, when I went a 49. They gave him another gave him a three-speed auto transmission, 25 pounds lighter. So you'll be, right. be all right, but uh, I'm gonna try to go 45, 46. 45. I can't wait to see it. Good luck to you. How how good does it feel to see you back out here, out of retirement? I love it. We're fighting it, but we're getting there. And how about Dad? I saw Dad. Dad's on a 460 Crusher. Yeah. How'd you get the seat on Crusher? Richard Gatson. How about that? Gave me gave me the opportunity. I said, heck yeah, I'm riding. You're showing these boys that dad can still get it done, too, yeah, huh? Number three qualifier. Good luck to you guys. Thank you. The team Teasley calling their shot, and as Jeremy alluded to, the rules are always a topic of controversy. There are so many different combinations, and they're always adjusted to maintain parity, which is one of the reasons why DME went with his GSXR 1000 for 2019. Along with their Hayabusa program, they like the lightweight, the extra wheelbase, and Demi Edinger, the head man at DME, thought he had something in this motorcycle. I'm doing okay, man. How, how are conditions looking down here for your team? It's doing good. We're up and down. Cool one day, hot the next. Sure. Keep us, keep us on our toes. I got to ask you something real quick. These bikes are advancing so quickly. Uh, last year at the finals, the 660 was the record. Now we're all the way down to 648. Why do you think they're advancing so quickly? Well, some of the rule changes more lately give some of the bigger guys a little bit more advantage of, you know, than they had before. And, uh, you know, we went to the combination with the 1000 to give us a little bit better one on the 1000 of uh, 
for the little guy, uh, Jeremy. We, we, we got it in here to go low 40s, but we just can't hold it wide open the whole track. We're letting out, you know, five seconds, four seconds in a row every time. And uh, we're, if we can just have keep it locked the whole way, we're in there. We're going to knock it over the fence. Hey, if we could have, would have. We're going to try it. Good luck, it's going to be a tough field. Team, uh, two. West Team DME West getting ready. There's the fishing. GSXR 1000. And playing hot. It's the Hayabusa of Team Conley. Getting the set to go. Good? Brad, you good? Here is Jason Dunnigan. Okay, okay. Suzuki Hayabusa. Yeah, Brad is going to fish 101 because Brad And here's the man who held that record at 660 last year, Dave Frankie Taylor. Stotts of Mr. Team Frankie. Honda. Mr. Frankie, how you doing, sir? Good, how yourself? Frankie, I got a question for you. Oh, and there's the legendary Kent. Guys, what the heck is going on? In Valdosta, 660 rotated the world. How did we get to, to 648 in a few months? I guess what, we lit their fire. <laughs> what is going on in this class? I mean, you guys are improving at light speed. Yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty crazy. We're 132 miles an hour. What's going to be the key to victory today, Frankie? Uh, consistency and a lot of horsepower. Sure. <laughs> how about how about Dad? Tuning yeah. job. How tough is it going to be? I'll go along with that. Consistency and a lot of horsepower. What are you seeing in terms of conditions today? Oh, beautiful. Especially, I mean, mid June or the end of June. We're very happy. You think the track can hold a 50 or a 40 today? Oh. Uh, 40 is going to be 40 is rough anytime, even in perfect conditions. So. We'll see. I don't think it's in the cards for us, but we got to go for it. What's it going to take to win this race? Time-wise? Well, at these speeds, and not, not necessarily your speeds, the harder, as hard as you have to push the bike, your motor has a limited lifetime. So if you can do a consistent 655, you might win, but if you try and go a 51 or a 48, the motor might not make the whole the whole race. It's it's a uh, coin toss. Sorry, yeah, it's, it's a coin toss. It's about survival too, right? It's not always the fastest bike that wins. Yeah. Well, good luck to you, Frankie. Here with the FBR shop. How's the weekend going for you guys? Going good. Excellent. What do you think about these big numbers in Pro Street? That's always good. They're flying, man. They're advancing quick, aren't they? Yes. Thanks for being here. You busy changing tires for all these sportsmen guys? All the time busy. We're thankful for that. You the man. <laughs> Bates Leathers on the midway. How's it going? Good, good. Stop by and say hi. And if you're a leather the suit order. There you go. Hey, we had some unfortunate incidents yesterday. Looks like the Bates Leathers are doing their job though, aren't they? Protecting yep. these guys. Yep. Here we That's go. That's for sure. That's for sure. Thanks for being here. How you doing, Mr. Eric? Yeah, Good Jack? to see you, man. What's Good going on, MTC? Oh, man, we're having a great weekend. Uh, a lot of our products are performing great this weekend. You saw Aaron Litton. How crazy is that? 648 yeah. on a street tire. Yeah, he runs, he runs our Pistons and our Gen 2 Clutch, and uh, just really happy for him, man. They do a tremendous job. So we got a lot of new stuff on the table this weekend, so come see us. We're here. So. Thanks for being here. Yeah. Take a look. MTC components in use. They work. Here's the Pistons that went 648. There's also the clutch that the Pro Street category uses, the MTC Gen 2 clutch. It's been a real game changer for that category. The fans were ready to go. What do you think, YouTube and Facebook world? Are you guys ready for the quickest and fastest street bikes in the world? The top five in this race are a 665 or better. This is going to be a very interesting race. As you can see, some of the top competitors, such as Aaron Litton, Team Williford, they're out there checking the traction, seeing where they want to line up. Maryland International Raceway is known for a superb track. Is it a track. 640 racetrack today, Aaron? It's hot. We're going to try to race today. There you go. What's the track temp, Kent? 106. Ooh. Perfect. 
106 degrees. So the track staff doing a wonderful job as always, but you can't do much about that sun that is just beating down. There's Rodney Williford, winner of the first XDA race in 2019. Looking to reclaim the points lead today. What a battle it will be. Plenty of VHT. Got to give him a tip of the cap there at the XDA. No expense spared. Yeah, you the man. What lane are you taking, Aaron? Right lane. Okay. I'm going to stay over here. I had luck over here yesterday, so we're going to stick with that. Now, when you said you're racing, you're putting in maybe a little more consistent, subtle tune-up? Yeah, you know, just... Just trying to go A to B, you know. Um, so especially got a broke by, so we're just going to see what it nets with this little bit hotter air, not try to rotate the earth or nothing, you know. What's going to take to win today, you think? Um, I think it's going to take a 48 or so to win. Isn't that uh, crazy? I think Jeremy and got a handle on what was going on with uh, the body work, so it's, they're going to be tough today. For Good sure. luck to you. All right, buddy. Thank you. Working hard. All right, so call your shot right now in the comments without – Fast forwarding or sneaking ahead, who do you think is going to win and why? Let's call your shot in the comments. We'll give you a look at the entire field. As you heard, Aaron Litton's got a broke by. That means Jamie Lopes damaged his motor in qualifying and could not make the call. Look at this tough field, though. Unbelievable. Pittsburgh in the house. Pittsburgh feeling like you can go back-to-back -back wins here? Well, we're going to try. We'll Excellent. see. What's going to take to get to the winner's circle today? Uh, consistency. Playing smart. 70s? Yeah, probably. We're not, not going to push on it too, too hard. Just, just yet, so. Good luck. Thank you. Jordan's only been in the class for a few short years, but has really come a long way. He won How are you feeling today, sir? Good, Jack. Good. Everything okay with the bike? What's the tune up here for round one? We're going to go pretty substantial, but we're going to save it until the end when we need it. You know. Just like we do. Good luck. Thank you. Gargolio won an unbelievable 663 in final qualifying. That put him in the number three spot. Great run for him. See a few 1,000s. We're also going to run a Pro Street B class. For the competitors that did not qualify, they get to race on Sunday. There's another one of the fast 1,000s. Look at the extra wheelbase. We'll find out. Chris Conley, Suzuki Hayabusa, everybody getting in the mental zone, getting focused, getting ready. Drag racing is a marksman sport. It's like sharpshooting where you have to be 100% focused when you go to the line for first round. There's no Good luck, Jason. Man, this class gets faster and faster. What's it going to take today? Not in low 60s, high 50s. Good luck. Donegan says low 60s, high 50s is what it will take. And again, there's a lot of different combinations, not only for the motorcycle, but for the rider, based on the rider's weight. If you watch NHRA Pro Stock Motorcycle Drag Racing, you know that it's advantageous to be as light as possible, 120 pounds. But what's great about this class is not everybody who loves motorcycle drag racing is 120 pounds. So they adjust the rules to give the big guys some help. As you can tell, Aaron Litton is not small in stature. He used to actually race in a category called the Heavy Hitters. So they do get some transmission advantages, some wheelbase advantages. And that is constantly monitored and adjusted. All right, here we go, ladies and gentlemen. First pair, this is round number one of eliminations. Litton gets a bye. As long as he doesn't cross the center line, he makes it down the track under power, he will advance to the next round. A free tune-up run. How quick can he go? Let's watch. Litton slaps out that Gen 2 clutch. Nice clean run, trying to keep the front wheel down. Top end, 650, 228. He's running like a bracket bike. Wow. Litton flexing his muscles. As you can tell in some of our pre-race interviews, I think some of these lighter competitors are worried. Did they give the big guys too much? We'll see what Frankie Stotts and his legendary father, Kent Stotts, can do on the Honda 1000 left-hand lane. Frankie gets set to oppose your number nine qualifier, Darian Payne. Frankie ended up in the number eight spot, which is unusual for him. He's usually in the top three or four. Winner to face Litton. Problems for Payne. Fighting the wheelie. How quick can that Honda go? Six. 63. 
great run. Thank you. That's a lot of steam, Kent. Yeah, that bike's never seen two of them. Congratulations. Thanks to Andy. Andy from d, &D. Congratulations. Big shout out to Andy Sawyer, d, &D. Uh -huh. Andy goes on to the next round. Oh, I'm sorry, Stones goes on to the next round to face lit. And that brings up another one of our big guys. Justin Shakir, near lane, always improving on his Suzuki Hayabusa. Shakir out of Manchester, Connecticut. He gets set to take on Gage Herrera, all the way from Indiana. 2003 Suzuki Hayabusa for him. Gage is your number 13 qualifier. Shakir qualified in the number four spot with a 664 at 222 miles an hour. First round of eliminations from the XDA Superbike Showdown. Oh, problems, both competitors. Let's keep an eye on the scoreboard. They were dead even off the line. Oh, upset, upset, upset. Gage gets in there with a 789. Beats the 828 of Justin Shakir. Woo. And that's what you gotta love about drag racing. When you push these machines to their utter limits, it's not always the higher qualified or more talented rider or better program that wins. Sometimes it is just straight up luck. Oh, and this is a monster matchup in round one. Jason Dunnigan, far lane, your number 12 qualifier, alongside Rodney Williford near lane, the multi-time winner, multi-time champion. Williford is your number five qualifier. Here we go, Williford with the whole shot. Both riders encountering problems. Dunnigan stays in the gas. Williford in the gas. Top end of the racetrack. Wind light coming on. Big Dunnigan. On upset. 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 704 beats a 739. Rodney had problems. Jason Dunnigan, your number 12 qualifier, is going on to the next round. Guys, you never know. Mr. Dunnigan, your boy just won a pedal fest. How about that, huh? That's our lucky break right here in the day. Congratulations. Hopefully it pays off. Good there to you. you. So Jason Dunnigan takes out the multi-time champion. He goes on to round two. Speaking of multi-time champions, here comes the GOAT, Jeremy Teasley and his GSXR 1000. John, very sorry about the luck for Williford Racing. What do you think happened there? The way you got to do when you're racing. Both of them had trouble and... One of them had less trouble than the other one. Were there fluids coming out of Rodney's bike? No, I think it was actually out of Gage's bike beforehand. There was okay. a little something there when I was up there, but Jason was already doing his burnout, so I didn't want to hold anybody up. He just pulled Rodney out this way a little bit. So. Well, tough break, but you still got a lot of dogs in the fight, don't you? Yeah, you still got four in, so. There you go. Good luck. Team DME, how about that big pedal fest win there for Jason Dunnigan? Take it how we can get it. Yes, sir. I also got to give you props. Kent just pointed to you after that 211. He said that's all Andy. We try to help him any way we can. There you go, guys. Congratulations. Thank you. Here with Senior. How you doing? Good. How are you? Who's Junior got first round? Chris Moore. Okay. Feeling good about the day so far? Yeah, it's good. And Jason made it past. And here comes Jeremy and Jason. Christopher's up after them. What a pedal fest win for Jason, huh? Yeah, that's awesome. Awesome. Congrats you know, to you guys. Thank you. So just a few moments till we get the track clean and green as we continue to admire Teasley's GSXR 1000. Jeremy, we saw a 50 out of Litton. Think you can keep pace? Shit, he did that on three control. He sure did, didn't he? Now, pre-race, we talked to Litton. He said he thinks it's gonna take a 40 to win it because he thinks you got it figured out. I I don't know. We'll see right here. I just have a good straight. Good luck. We've been fighting it all weekend. So. Did you do your burnout yet? No. Okay, so you still got enough cooldown time yep. and everything. Excellent. Check it out, ladies and gentlemen, even a Kawasaki. Where's my Kawasaki ZX-14 fans at? Boy, the big guns are flexing their muscles here, huh? Yeah, I, I know the thing. Only you speak Spanish. You could be our translator. Ask him, ask him how he feels heading into race day here. He's very happy for the six second club. Good luck. That's Luis Sierra all the way from Puerto Rico on the Kawasaki ZX-14. Thanks so much for the comment there. As these racers get set to go back into action, Luis looking for the upset of his career. If he could take down the GOAT, the number two qualifier, Jeremy Teasley. The 14 alongside the GSXR.
but if you've been paying attention the last few pairs, you know that anything can happen. Again, I'd like to stress that these components, these motorcycles, these engines are pushed to their breaking point every single time out. You can never take anything for granted, especially when you got a street tire, no slick, no wheelie bar. A wheelie can happen at any point. Oh, Teasley, nice hole shot for him. Can he keep pace with Litton? He's out of here. 651, 226. Teasley right there with Litton. We got a race. What an event. Hope you guys are enjoying this. We got motorcycles knocking on the door of 640s. Here comes Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania's Jordan Haas with his crew chief, John Gover, out of Williford Racing. Jordan, the most recent winner. Riding that hot streak from Virginia Motorsports Park last month. We'll see what Jordan can do here in the opening round of eliminations. He's got Alex Moore out of Greer, South Carolina. Greer with the whole shot, but Jordan out in front. Jordan on a good pass. Here comes Moore. Moore was 024 top and went like Jordan. The horsepower gets him there first. 676. 222 takes out a 685. Jordan, a good light as well. And we continue on. Here comes a man who's certainly riding high on confidence, coming off of the career best. Mark Gargolio snuck in there to the number three spot on this Williford Racing Suzuki Turbo Entry at a 663, 215 miles an hour. In the far lane, that is Ryan Hable. Another young and talented up and coming rider out of Roberts, Wisconsin. Hable hey looking for a huge upset. Gargolio with a nice 60 foot time. He was 073 on the tree. Big end. Gargolio. 672. He comes back for the next round. And here comes Chris Conley Jr. on the white DME Hayabusa alongside Chris Moore. Conley Jr. out of Michigan, Moore out of South Carolina. Conley Jr., another individual that has improved quickly in just a few short years, a former pro stock drag sled racer, now turned pro street motorcycle racer. Chris Moore, a bit of a grudge legend from Greer, South Carolina. Moore on the GSX-R1000, whole shot, 028. Conley Jr. giving chase, top end, who will it be? Oh, Conley Jr., another upset for Team DME. The number 11 qualifier takes out the number six qualifier. Anything can happen here in turbocharged motorcycle drag racing. You absolutely have to love it. What a wild round one. Let's take you now to the Pro Street B category. Three motorcycles in competition. This is the GSXR 1000 of Jake Duggan. He comes from Watertown, Connecticut. It's a 2006 Suzuki. Duggan just missed this field with a 711. The bump spot ended up being a 699. But again, kudos to the XDA. This is a great idea to let these competitors run on Sunday. Nobody wants to put the bike in the trailer and go home. $6.95. They do race for some money and a trophy as well. It's treated like a real category. As we bring up Lorenzo Ortiz. Taking on Carlos Olivia. Oh, Lorenzo smokes the tire. Actually, I don't see Carlos. It's gonna be a solo shot for him. Carlos may have broke. And we also have real street action as well. Make sure you stay tuned to Cycle Drag YouTube and also CycleDrag.com Facebook, and we will bring you plenty of real street coverage. We're going to continue to focus on the pro street motorcycles in this category as we get set for round two. So I ask you in the comments now, guys, leave me your impression, your reaction. Who's got the upper hand? Litton, Teasley, is it one of the dark horses like Dunnigan or Conley Jr.? Frankie Stotts in the Honda, who knows? And will we see 40s on race day Sunday? That's the question. 
as you can tell, very meticulous and thorough track prep. Track happens. just as good as it was Everything. first session? Yeah, it's got a little more heat in it, but um, I think it's good. You're making, uh, you're making those 50s look easy, man. You got you to gotta get it while the getting's good, you know what I mean? You think we'll see a 40? Um, not right here. It might dip in the 40s. We tightened it up a little bit for the uh, heat and everything, but we ain't shooting for a 40 right now. We're just shooting to uh, make the same lap again. Good luck. All right, buddy. Thank you. Well, this matchup has a whole lot of cachet coming up. Frankie versus Aaron. Chad, what are you seeing? What's the weather station saying? Uh, well, we're at 1,100 feet this morning. Now it's up to about 1,400 feet before we left the trailer. So we added a little bit of power, but we're losing a little bit of track. That's hard to say at this track. It's so amazing that even if the track gets hot, it still works. Absolutely. Yeah. Track prep is awesome, but the sun's beating down. So It is. The track was uh, at 114 earlier. Now it's at 129. It's still livable. You feel like you guys have a lot of data at this facility? Yeah, we're starting to catch up. You know, we're not an East Coast team normally, but uh, you can't deny this is the best series going. So um, it's a 28-hour round trip for us, but it's worth it. Try to make that drive pay off. Thank you. Ken travels in from Chicago all the way to Buds Creek, so, Maryland. What'd you say, Rodney? Yeah. Heading into a big round two. That was a wild round one. What yeah. happened to you first off? I uh, spun on the one-two shift and then wheelie. Okay. And it was drifting on the wheelie and I couldn't gather it up. And Jason clipped me at the very end, so it's a good run. How about your teammates here heading into round two? Uh, hopefully we got something for them. We'll see. Good luck. Thanks, man. Well, that accentuates just how easy it is to make one minor slip up, spin the tire, wheelie, and you're done. Even if you're a multi-time champion like Rodney Williford. Now Rodney's got to just sit back and watch his teammates. And I implore you to get ready for this rousing matchup because this is worthy of a final. Due mainly to Frankie's less than stellar qualifying effort, Aaron Litton, Frankie Stotts. Let me know in the comments who you got this round. The Honda 1000 or the Suzuki Hayabusa, your number one in eight qualifier. Litton has been the man of the show. New ET record, new speed record. But Frankie knows the thing about that because he set the world record last November. That was at a 660 in Valdosta. We've come a long way since then, haven't we? Now we're looking at 640s is what it could possibly take. This is gonna be a great track race. Litton 012 off the line, but wait a minute, Litton spins, here comes the Honda of Frankie Stotts, top end, whoa, upset, 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 Frankie 655, the number eight qualifiers going to the semis, look at how excited Ken is, think he's pumped up or what folks, I can't even catch him. And now it's time for Cinderella to keep on dancing. Our two upset artists from round number one, Jason Dunnigan, your number 12 qualifier, left-hand lane. You're taking a look at him right now. He's set to take on number 13 qualifier, Gage Herrera. One of these individuals, after a less than stellar qualifying run, will make it to the semis. Two top-notch Suzuki Hayabusa racers. Who you got? Dunnigan, Herrera. Who's going on? Oh, we got a whole shot. Gage, Dunnigan spins. Problems for him. How quick can Gage go? Top end of the racetrack. Gage, a 772. He will advance to the semifinals. That brings up our next pair. Here comes the former world record holder. The turbocharged GSXR 1000 of the GOAT, Jeremy Teasley. They call him the GOAT because he's got more than 25 sportsman championships. Jordan Haas looking for an upset. Jeremy Teasley with the whole shot. 057. Teasley up and out of here. Guys, watch the scoreboard. Teasley, new world record. 6 47 2 24. Six, 47, oh my goodness, are we dreaming, a 
47, unbelievable. That brings up our final pair. Another individual who pulled off a huge upset in round one, Chris Conley Jr., your number 11 qualifier at Team DME, takes on Williford Racing's Mark Gargolio. Great rivalry between Williford Racing and DME. Two of the leaders in this category. Both field multi-bike teams. This one's a monster matchup. Who's going on to face Jeremy Teasley? Conley Jr. or Gargolio? Conley Jr. with the whole shot. Oh, Mark off the pace. Mark has problems. Conley Jr. is going to get another upset. 674, 217. Conley Jr. is going to the semis. Wow. It'll be Stotts, Herrera, Teasley, and Conley Jr. You got to love the unpredictability of Pro Street Motorcycle Drag Racing, guys. Wow. And it looks like that brings us... We got a video of Teasley saying he was going to go 47. He goes to 47. How about it? He knows his shit. Unbelievable, huh? Yeah. Congratulations, man. Dude. One Dude, proud record, brother. Ladies and gentlemen. This we will be the final team DME over of here. our Pro Street B class coming up. Let's see if we can here find we go. DME. We got Pro they Street got B coming up. Demi, this is like a heavyweight fight, blow for blow for the world record. 47, where'd that come from? Well, we knew it was there, it's just getting it all put together. But uh, putting numbers on top of numbers is never never the way to win a race. But uh, uh, we knew it was there, just had to put it all together. And, and uh, it's still a whole lot more there, but we just gotta, maybe the weather come to us tonight. There you go, good luck. Wow, new world record holders. Team Williford Racing. I'm gonna try to get it back. Well, motorcycle fans, you came to the right video because we're showing you world records. Please share this video with a fellow motorcycle fan, even if they're not a motorcycle drag racing fan. If you like fast bikes, drag racing, motorcycle, street bikes, sport bikes, you'll appreciate this. This is our final in Pro Street B, the Hayabusa of Lorenzo Ortiz near lane alongside the GSXR 1000 of Jake Duggan. Oh, Duggan tattoos him on the line. 026 to an 089. Is the GSXR 1000 heading for victory? Yes, it is. 692. And there's a number that would have got Duggan into the show. Here comes the real street bikes. Very talented Ashley Contoir alongside Michael Sweeney, her fiance. There's an entire video feature up on Ashley. You'll have to check out after this video. That's on the Cycle Drag. YouTube page. This was her first ever event and she really turned some heads in the real street category, which is designed to be a stepping stone to Pro Street. Plenty of street bikers All right, here guys, too. guys, how you doing? All right, How's up, man? Where are you guys from? From the Eastern Shore of Maryland. How far of a ride is that, Dan? Uh, about two and a half. Not bad, Both okay. Bikes, no, say two. <laughs> <laughs> how big's your crew? Uh, how big is your crew? Uh, we just like six, six, six of us today. Okay. Uh, Tell me about what motorcycle do you have? I got a 2012 ZX14. Beautiful. We got the ZX10. How do you like the ZX10? Yep. Excellent. How about you, man? 2016 ZX14. Oh! <laughs> How about over here? 2018 Ninja 1000. Beautiful. Yeah, we can right. heavy. <laughs> I see no boosters in this club, huh? ZX10. Beautiful. <laughs> who's, uh, who's the fastest in the club? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Anybody drag race? Go uh, start this year. Yeah. Hey, I'll tell you what. Look at my website, okay? I ride a Busa. I just did a whole article about keeping it street, but uh -huh. doing stage one drag racing. It's so much fun. You guys are gonna be hooked. Right, you just gotta get. You gotta call Brock. You gotta get the clutch mod. What's next? Little lowering link yeah. and a strap, and that's it. Yep. You guys keep it safe on the road though, all right? Yeah, Take man. care. You have a good day. Two. <laughs> now there's some true street bikes.
And full disclosure, I know some of you on YouTube land and Facebook land have called me out about this pro street class. Hey, it's not street, it's not street. Guys, we're talking drag racing terms. Yes, you could probably not jump on Frankie Stotts' bike and go from Pennsylvania to Daytona Bike Week. However, there's no wheelie bar, there's a street legal DOT tire, stock appearing body work, okay? Factory headlights, there's a lot of things on that motorcycle that make it straight in terms of drag racing. Look at some of the other motorcycles and you'll see what an all-out drag bike is and the differences compared. How about Brock Davidson's great exhaust systems? Wonderful. Also, check out that article that I talked about if you want to get into drag racing. It's on CycleDrag.com. It's called A Rookie Learns to Race. I detail the Brock's Stage 1 kit. Because I'm the kind of guy, I don't want to get too deep into the sport. I want to keep my motorcycle street worthy because I would like to ride from Pennsylvania to Daytona. But I also want to do some drag racing. Frankie, what a shootout. Litton was the number one qualifier. You drew him in round two. But it's like your dad told us before, it's not always the quickest bike that wins this thing, is it? No, definitely not. It's usually the one that's most consistent. And What's the uh, mindset for the rest of the way? Uh, mainly, uh, what happened last pass was that we had uh, power management set in where it started kicking in at anything real speed over 214 miles an hour. And it was hitting that, which is pretty much limiting us to 209 miles an hour. So we took off that limiter and it should go around 216. How about, how about Teasley rotating the earth again, 647? Yeah, we're, we're going to try and go a 40 this, this next pass. Oh my. Good luck. Thank you. Team Honda. 33. A little bit of history for you, too. Frankie was the second in the sixes back in 2011. With the 698 down at South Georgia Motorsports Park. How did we go from a 698 to 640s? in eight short years. This class is advancing at light speed. Some of the components that DME offers at the track, they're always busy under the tent. Let's see if we can maybe catch a word with the laptop tuning wizard, Andy Sawyer. Congratulations, Andy. A new world record, man. This thing is blow for blow, isn't it? Yeah. you? Uh, what's the maintenance like on this GSXR in between rounds? Uh, it's normal about like a clutch, fuel, tuning, all that stuff, about the same stuff every round. Okay. Now after that 47, do you think conditions are going to continue to improve for you guys here? We hope so. Wow. You got the same tune up in or change? Putting fuel in the tank. How about that? Good luck. Thank you. So you're putting fuel in the tank. Close look at this GSXR 1000. Yeah, why change the tune? We got the Michelin Power One too. What do you think about yeah. that new tire? Any? Uh, we've been testing it. We run it on this bike. We went 660s with it on this bike in uh, Virginia. We're running it on Junior's bike right now. I had it on there all weekend. The, the new Dunlop is before. four. He's been a 674 with it. Uh, Jason Dunnigan went 662 the other night with a with a new ball on there. So. Uh, they seem to be working pretty good. It's got to be a good feeling to finally get some new rubber that works, huh? Definitely, definitely. The company's willing to work with us. There you go. What do you think about the 1000 versus the Busa? Pretty evenly matched? They are now. With the way the rolls are, they're pretty much perfect. Our class it. has stepped up tenfold in the last you know, three races. It's been amazing. It certainly is. Good luck to you guys. Thank you. We got the Busa of Chris Conley out for a little clutch maintenance. We got the GSXR 1000. As of now, that is the world's quickest street tire motorcycle. How about it? Big congratulations to Jeremy Teasley and crew. Ladies and gentlemen, let's introduce him once again as the father of the record holder. You weren't the father of the record holder for about a day. Right. Your boy got it back. How proud are you? Happy, real happy. DME crew right here. You got Demi right here and Andy. They they know what they're doing. Pretty amazing, huh? That's the man behind you. There he is. <laughs> you got one heck of a stable of riders here, man. I mean, I think it's all coming together. The the, the know-how, the riding talent, what you guys do at the shop. Right, we could do it with all these guys here. You know, Andy and, uh, and Jeremy and, and his dad, Michael Cole, and, and, you know, Chris Conley, and, and Chris Conley Jr., and Jason Dunnigan, Mr. Dunnigan. You know, those are great guys to be around every day. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's bad that we have to race each other at the end of the day, but... You know, that's the only bad thing. You know, if we were out here just trail riding and going from place to place, it would be all fun. But, you know, somebody's going to have to go home early, and, uh, and that's the bad thing. No doubt. Big semis coming up. Can't wait. Yeah, man.
DME teammates must face off in this upcoming semi. It'll be Teasley versus Conley Jr. You can tell the teammate teammates don't like that too much. We're going to head down to the parking lot here at beautiful Bud's Creek. I've been to this track a gazillion times. I never knew there was a little retention pond back where I parked. I was looking for some shade because it was hot. Big thanks to the Christian Motorcycle Thank you, CMA, for all the hard work keeping these guys hydrated. And as Andy alluded to, this class has had a tire Don't crisis. Don't count out the dark horse, huh? <laughs> Qualified 13th, you're now in the semifinals, one of the toughest fields ever. How do you feel? I feel good, you know, getting lucky. Probably be lucky in the good any day. So, let's we'll see if we can keep it going. Hopefully we'll go A to B this pass, and hope for the best. Anything radical done to the bike to try to keep up with these guys? Uh, it took about 18 to 20 pounds off it. We had it two inches longer, and we found more horsepower with the winner. So, it's been paying off to try and get it all work together. Good luck. Thank you. A great run for Gage. But again, back to the tires, guys. Any DOT tire is legal, but a lot of these competitors prefer the Michelin Power One, which has been discontinued now for several years. So the concern is that tire is getting old. Are they still true? Is there enough integrity left in those tires to go 222 miles an hour? Dunlop has released a new tire that Chris Conley has and a few others in the category, and they're hoping that that is the savior, where they can finally get away from the Michelin Power One that is probably getting a little old and in some cases maybe even dry rotted and at the speeds that these competitors are going now you got to have a good piece of rubber out there <laughs> semi-finals <laughs> just to show you why we don't race these events on paper Frankie Stotts, number eight qualifier. Gage Herrera, your number 13 qualifier. Gage looking for what would have to be one of the biggest upsets of his career on his Suzuki Hayabusa out of Indiana. Frankie Stotts and the Turbo Honda looking to go another round. You heard Frankie. He said it, he thinks it'll take 40s today, but Frankie has yet to taste the 40s. We'll see if that consistent tune-up continues. The net results for Frankie. even off the line Frankie with a monster 60 foot nice clean straight run Frankie watch that Honda ladies and gentlemen 649 215 a new personal best for Frankie congratulations Kent congratulations team Honda oh what an achievement Steve Nichols out there DME congratulations you feel the euphoria and the jubilation wow 649. So all of a sudden, does Frankie Stotts now have the advantage as we bring up the teammates, Jeremy Teasley, alongside Chris Conley Jr. Teasley coming off of his 647 world record. Can he repeat it? Conditions are getting a little bit better. It's starting to cool down just a little bit. Conley Jr. looking to upset his friend. These guys are really close off the track. But I'll tell you, just like so many other racers, when you put those helmets on, there ain't no friends. Teasley looking to make it to the final. Conley looking to do the same. The 1000 versus the Busa. Who you like? It'll take a 648 or better to get lane choice. Slate hole shot, Conley Jr. But Teasley is out of here. How quick can Teasley go? Ladies and gentlemen, 643! 643! 643! 643! 643 shatters the world record! Shatters the world what record! What did we just see? What did I just see? What the heck? On a street tire! How is that possible? How is that possible? Wow! Oh my, I don't even know how that's possible. Wow. Unreal street tire performance. 643-224. Holy moly. Unbelievable. Truly and utterly staggering. Let's bring you some action now in the real street category. Late in the rounds for this class as well as Spencer Claycomb near lane takes on Ashley Couture. As we get set for what will be a mammoth final 
between Teasley and Stotts. And man, your heart has to go out to Stotts. He runs a career best 649. You'd think he'd get lane choice. Lost lane choice on a 49. Here's two racers that we probably will see in the Pro Street class someday. Ashley and Spencer, uh -oh. both having problems. Oh, look at this. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> How about an 11.94 gets you in the final in real street. Wow, guys, that was amazing. Demi, what? While it's quiet, I gotta get you, man. Did I just see a 643 on a street tire? Yes, sir. That's insane! Yes, sir. How are we breaking off such big chunks? Well, they got a great group behind me. And uh, that, couldn't do it without them. That's uncanny in all of drag racing. You know, if you look at Funny Bike in these classes, they pick up thousands, hundreds. You guys are, are picking them up five, six hundreds at a time. Well, people like Aaron Litton is pushing us and, and the Willifords, you know, it's, you gotta be pushed to go to the next level and you know, I'm ready. Where do we go from here? I don't know. This is going a little too quick. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy you do that on the stock stock chassis. You know, you know, the stock frame. It's crazy that it can handle that. But Unbelievable to me. Yeah, Congratulations. <laughs> Man. Thank you. A 43. Gosh, a 43 on a street tire. Can you believe it? Unbelievable. 43, that's a funny bike number. That's approaching a top fuel number. Man Cup Finals last year, Mitch Brown wins the thing going 620 top fuel. We're not that far away here with street tires, are we? Wow. Unbelievable. Yeah, hey, hats off to all you guys on the track prep. It is awesome. A true great radial track prep. Whoo! I still can't believe it, man. 43. I'm still stunned over the 60 they ran last year. Now they're at a 43. <laughs> This is insane. Indeed. Guys, share this video around. Please make sure you subscribe to Cycle Drag on YouTube. Make sure you like CycleDrag.com on Facebook. There is much, much more coming. And if your jaw is on the ground like me, don't worry. Pinch yourself. This isn't a dream. We have street bikes. And I say street bike. I know a lot of you guys online call me out. Listen, street tire, no wheelie bar. That's what defines street here in motorcycle drag racing. It's incredible. Six... 43 guys unbelievable and we got more coming make sure you stay tuned to cycle drag on youtube make sure you like cycledrag.com on facebook and leave us your opinion of this how are these bikes improving so quickly all you drag racing aficionados from all different categories understand that you just don't pick up performance that quickly in a class that has this long of a history normally it's a a couple hundreds maybe half a tenth a year Frankie Stotts last year in a video you can watch on Cycle Drag went 660 at the Man Cup Finals in November. It was the fastest thing anybody had ever seen. And how about now? Unbelievable. Real street coming up. Crazy. Teasley also in competition in Real Street. Hey, how about he didn't that. say a 643. I told you a 43. <laughs> That's a 643. Woo! And that, ladies and gentlemen, brings us to the epic, grandiose, rousing final between the Honda and the Suzuki. Who do you got? And if what we saw in the semis is indicative of what we could see in the finals, I, I, I don't know that I'm going to believe my eyes. I'm telling you guys, I came up in this sport, six seconds on a street tire is impressive. Now we are heading towards the low sixes. It's unfathomable. Frankie and Jeremy. Both of you guys just rotated the earth. Welcome to the 640s. Congratulations. Welcome to another universe, 643. What in the heck is going on in this class, guys? I don't know. <laughs> I love it. Not many words. I don't know either. It's crazy. So what's what's the tune up here for the finals? Are we going after it? Well, of course. Maybe the first ever side by side forty. Could be. I think so. There you go. Good luck. And the thousands, thousands are showing the boosters. What's up, right? Yeah, so far.
Did that 43 feel any different? Yeah, I knew that was a fast one. Yeah, I knew when I went through, I knew that was probably the fastest ball. It's the fastest I've ever been. Normally it's hard to tell, but that one, it kind of wheelied a little bit in the middle, and they don't, they don't know when to do that, so. Amazing. And as he was coming down the return road after the pass, he's nodding his head. He's like, yeah, that was a great one. <laughs> Oh, good luck to both you guys. You are watching history unfold. Two young and talented riders. I want to know in the comments, would you try this if given the opportunity? Be honest. Would you try this? Would you ride one of these unbelievable street tire mid-six second rocket ships? Track prep for the final. What in the world are we in store for here after both competitors run 40? Well, consistency. I, I, I don't and horsepower. I don't know what to say anymore. You got you got two 1000s in the 640s. Teasley went a 43. You be, you've been in this game forever. What's going on? This is getting weird. Well, part of it on our, on our part is, uh, you know, we're, we're primarily a, a Midwest racing team because we come from the Midwest. And I will say, when tracks are prepared as good as these are, that Jason Miller does with his organization, you can find the edge and keep pushing. If they're not at this level, you can't push that hard so you can't learn. So it's a 28 hour round trip for us to come here, but it, it's been worth it. So you need a track you're gonna stick to to give it your all. Yeah. Let me ask you this, how long ago was it off the top of your head that a 743 was competitive <laughs> for you? Well, I got off the bike running 725. Woo! And that's when Frank got on. And what year was that? Oh, shit. Uh, oh, six, oh, seven. Good Lord. Yeah. How is this class advancing that quickly? Other classes in motorcycle drag racing aren't picking up that quick. This is light speed, the technology here, the suspension, the turbo, everything. I think, I think it's the quality of the people and all the like uh, the sponsors, Falcon, JE, uh, Max ECU, they all want to see us go faster and faster and faster. So when we ask for something, even if they think it's not what we need, they'll give it to us, we try it, and you know, eight out of 10 things, when you try, they, they don't work. That's right. But the two that do, you advance. Well, I'm glad you're getting support. Last question for you. Frankie goes to 49, you think you might have lane choice or get to relax. You're six hundredths behind that 43. W what'd you do? Did you throw more at it? Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, we have to run a lot of boost, but that's okay, that little Honda stays together so far. Knock on wood. Good luck. Thank you, much. Probably more boost than they've ever thrown at it before. You could tell that Frankie kind of looked like the cat that ate the canary. He had a sneaky grin on his face when I asked him if he turned it up. Because once you get to the finals, consistency and making it to the next round is not a factor. Give it everything you got and hope that you gave it enough. Frankie Stotts on the Honda. Jeremy Teasley on the Suzuki GSXR 1000. Two of the quickest in the world. Teasley off of his record smashing 643 stops off a career best 649 are we set for more history who will win the XDA super bike showdown it has been a historic record smashing exciting event and it all culminates right here with two 1000s they were the busa killers today the light power to weight ratio the long wheelbase the technology the talented riders it all came together to produce this epic mammoth final who you got guys honda versus suzuki teasley and stotts two of the best in the game today Pretty even off the line, two great 60 foots. We are bar to bar. What a drag race scoreboard. Far end says, Oh, 642 to a 646. The first side by side are you 40. Me? The quickest are you me? of all time. Did we lose. Oh, 40. Congratulations. 
642, Tinsley wins it. How about that, Crow? He picks up another one, congratulations. How about that? That's got to be one of the most significant passes in the history of motorcycle drag racing. A new Pro Street World Record Can you believe these numbers? Unbelievable. Wow. We've gained almost two tenths since the first race of the season because I'm pretty sure the first race in the spring, they said, who's going to be the first into the sixes? And now we're in the lower fours. It's we're going for the 30s now. They're catching those top fuel times. It's crazy. Crazy. Everybody buzzing. What an event. Man, and poor Frankie Stotts goes to 646 and loses, but congratulations to that whole squad. Team DME, Jeremy Teasley, what a weekend. This is one we will never forget. Like I said, please share this video with a friend because if you know anybody who rides a motorcycle, they've got to see this street tire performance. Unreal. Teasley enjoying the trophy and Jeremy the Jeremy Teasley, a new world record, two wins. How you feeling here with your crew and your friends? That's awesome. Uh, the few, last few races have been pretty bad, so this stuff makes up for it. No doubt, guys. Let's hear it for Jeremy Teasley. All right. Jeremy, unbelievable. Can you help me pick my job off the floor? I've been in this sport a long time. I didn't think I'd see a 642. Neither would I, um, to be honest. Um, might just keep going faster. Well, ever since it's been built, it's been going left, right. Can never get Hold on one second, let's let those bikes go down. You never really get comfortable on the bike. It's always been going left or right or wheelie. So finally, I think we got pretty much all the bugs worked out, I would say. And uh, that's to Andy and uh, Demi and Chris and Steve, Kyle, obviously. But um, I don't know, I just get to ride the bike. We really didn't change the tune up too much from none of the passes today. It's just me riding it better. So, you know, without them, I couldn't do none of this. That's AM on the real street bike, so AM uh, performance the uh, real street bike. Uh, I, I was shooting 459, but I went a 63 against AM uh, in a semi, so he, uh, he couldn't be mad about that. He went a 67, I went a 63, so it's side by side. Where does this weekend stand in your all time career? It's got to be up there. It's definitely up there. I'm not sure where, but it's definitely in the top two or three. Where do we go from here? Is there actually more left in that bike? I really don't know, to be honest. Um, I would say probably not, but I guess we'll just find out next race. Congratulations, JT. Thank you. What a remarkable, memorable, and epic event it was at Maryland International Raceway. And congratulations to that team as well. Frankie Stotts at any other race would have run the table and won. But when you're competing against world records, up. Very arduous and challenging, but they turned the turbo up and it benefited them. Honda leaves with a new personal best of 646. I moved up three mile an hour. I yelled it as I drove by. If I told you guys pre race, you're going to the final and you're going to run a 46. Would you believe me if I told you it wasn't going to be good enough to win? No, no. If you told me you're going to the final, I expect to go to the final. I, I do everything I can to make sure that happens. But a 46 and lose, that's that's amazing. But it was fun. I'll lose that way any day. Does it feel like a win? Uh, yeah. Considering that we've we've been down a mile an hour for the past 10 years or so, and couldn't really find it, and then now we've uh, got some great spots behind us, and we finally found it. Is there anything left in this machine? I mean, to just pick up performance. I told yeah. Frankie, I'm still stuck in Valdosta mode when a 660 was the greatest thing I ever saw. And now you got a tenth and a half in less than a year. Yeah, uh, yeah, there's more in it because we just found the horsepower between web cams, Vansonine's doing the head, Andy from DME helping me with the cam timing, and Steve, with the, Steve from Max ECU uh, got me a set of coils that really likes to fire it all we the whole combination is part of what we were missing and uh now we find some more so maybe we can do something with it amazing guys something more well congrats on a great weekend and a great show thank you Bob.
So a little pro stock motorcycle head technology now coming to pro street. Here's the question, where do we go from here guys? In eight years, this class picks up half a second. In less than a year, they pick up almost two tenths. What is next? for Pro Street Motorcycle. I certainly hope you guys enjoyed this round by round coverage. Had a great time at Maryland International Raceway watching the quickest street tire motorcycles in the world. My jaw is still on the ground from Jeremy Teasley's record setting performance, a 642, 222 in the final. Frankie was 217 miles an hour. I know a lot of you want to know the exact numbers and everything. The run sheets for the total event can be found on the CycleDrag.com Facebook page. If you want to go there and look in the photo albums, you can see every single reaction time, every single elapsed time, every single mile an hour. I know a lot of you guys want to see that. But please, above all, leave us your feedback. What do you think of this? What's your explanation for technology advancing so quickly? And finally, do make sure you're subscribed to Cycle Drag on YouTube and you like CycleDrag.com on Facebook. You'll never miss an update. You'll never miss a video. Thank you guys so much for all the comments, the support, and watching. We're growing at a nice pace here. Not, not as quick as the Pro Street class, but definitely growing on social media and YouTube. So we thank you. We'll continue to travel the globe to bring you the most impressive motorcycles out there. Drag bikes, street bikes, rallies. Supercross, motocross, you name it. We cover it all here on Cycle Drag. Please subscribe and like. Thank you very much. Really want to thank all of our sponsors that make these videos possible as well. Thank you, APE, Webcam, Trimtex, Track Dynamics, Orient Express, Pingle, Liska, MPS, McKinney Motorsports, Timbaland Chassis, Adams Performance, Dunnigan Racing, Brock's Performance, HTP, RC Components, Vantine Racing, Carpenter Race Engines, Projack, Laser, Growthist Drag Bikes, US Chrome, Wozner Pistons, Dahl GMS Performance, Steve Huff Motorsports Advanced Sleeves, Chris Matheson, Man Cup Motorcycle Drag Racing, Macintosh Machine and G-Built, Kibble White Performance, SRW M2 Shock, Spevco, Final Swipe, Fuel Tech. Thank you so much everybody who helps us get out there on the road and pay some of these massive travel bills. We're going to keep doing it because we love motorcycles. Thank you very much everybody. Have a great day. Thank you.